Okay, so um, there's always more to learn. Now, when you look at this execution plan, and I'm picking up with the execution plans on this one, it's just a simple three table join. I don't want to risk lazing anyone by swinging my legs back and forth, so I'll pick up over here for this particular tick. Three table join here, selection on the three tables, join between the three tables, grandparent, parent, child, to give you a sort of very obvious clue as to the way in which perhaps they ought to join in the order and so forth. Now, in the good old days, people were very keen to say, well, the plan execution starts sort of first over to the right, which is a bit like bad news for this one, because first over to the right is down the bottom. Oh, and the other bit of it hints from the good old days was it's near the top and over to the right. Well, do you want near the top or do you want over to the right? Because over to the right is down the bottom. However, nowadays I think people tend to realise when we look at plans, the commoner way of looking at them is to think first child first, recursive descent. You look at the first thing that appears in the text, and if it's got children, you think about the first child operating first, and the second child operating second, and somehow the results being combined. First child first. Most people would be happy to read this plan and say, we scatter the grandparent into memory, we scatter the parent into memory, we scan the child, probe the parent, probe the grandparent. Fairly straightforward three table join. Okay, so we decide that we want to run this parallel. Now, very straightforward, six lines of serial become a 19 line parallel. It's 19 lines because I put in hints to stop the extra six lines that you get from blue filters in 11.2. That way you can almost read the text. And when we look at that, you can almost pick out, let me do that, exactly the same shape of the plan. We've got the grandparent at the top, hash join, grandparent, hash join, parent, child. And you can easily be forgiven for thinking, well, yes, okay, the grandparent goes into the memory, then the parent, and then the child. Because that's first child first. Okay? Tip number one. The tip of the iceberg number one. It doesn't work like that. If you're running parallel queries and looking at parallel plans, here is a really useful tip. You've got about 95% of the thinking to do after the tip, but here's a starting point. Follow the table cue. TQ is there. This thing here, the name is TQ. I've got the TQ line here. What I've highlighted is the work that goes into building the first, if you like, virtual table. Follow the TQs because that's the order of action. So this says we use the parents to generate our zero virtual table. We go to the child for our next virtual table. What shall we do next? We go to the grandparent for the next virtual table. We haven't done the join yet. Right? Once we've got through that bit, table Q3, table we do the join between the first two virtual tables. Table Q4, we do the join between the table Q0, 3, and table Q2, uh, the ones we've just done. The order of execution follows the table queues. And that's a whole new ballpark to learn and work out. It gets difficult when you have difficult execution plans and difficult statements. So follow the table cues. That is a good tip. There's a lot more to it. One of the things, of course, we haven't yet looked at is which parallel query slaves do what. So here's tip number two. Not only do you need to look at execution plans, you need to look at the PQ TQ stat if you can run the query. And this will help you understand which slaves did which amount of work when and who they pass results to. And again, we've got table cues up here. Table cues 0, 1, 2 I've got so far. And we can see here, it slaves 0 and 1, scan the parent. You have to sort of guess that by checking with the plan. Scan the parent, distribute the parent rows to, table, uh, to parallel slaves 2 and 3. The same slaves, 0 and 1, scan the child and distribute it to slaves 2 and 3. Oh, and then it was slaves 2 and 3 who scanned the grandparent table and distributed that back to uh, slaves 0 and 1. And then 2 and 3 did the join, set the results to 0 and 1. 0 and 1 did the second join and set the results to the query coordinator. Unless you follow the table queues and cross check the TQ stat, if you read all the PQ TQ stat, it's very hard to figure out what goes on. Oh, although it can help if you've got indoor SQL monitoring and have paid the extortion of license fee for the SQL tuning tools and the diagnostic pattern performance pack. Right? 
But if you're running on a budget, you've got more to learn. Maria. Manny doesn't like tips, that was a lot of tips. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to a few more topics. Let's talk about finding the right solutions. <coughs> now, if any of you have listened to sessions that I've done before on gathering stats, I don't have much to say on this. I have a single statement. <coughs> I think if you're gathering statistics, you should let the estimate percent parameter of the gather stats procedures default to auto sample size, assuming you're in 11G or higher. How many folks are now on 11G? Oh, God bless you. You all survived the upgrade. Okay, so the fact that you're there, this is the moment. Embrace auto sample size. Why do I tell you to do that? I'm going to tell you to do that because we have rewritten that algorithm from scratch. It now uses a new hash <laughs> Yeah, it's all good, right? Um, it's a new hash-based algorithm, and why is that important? Why does it change? It means that we don't spill to temp when we gather statistics. We're able to look at all of the values in the table and use those values and this new approximate NDV algorithm to get a very accurate cardinality estimate, pretty much equivalent to 100% sample in the about the time it takes to do 10%. Don't believe me? There is a white paper that explains, if you're really into it, which inevitably there is some member of the O table sitting somewhere in this region who says to me, I don't want to know. So if you want to know, that's where you can pick up the, uh, the white paper on it. Otherwise, just believe the numbers. I'm much more interested in proving that it actually works as opposed to worrying about how it works. And you're able to do that. This one you can do yourself too. Um, the TPCH benchmark and the data generation tool is available for download should you choose to do it. I built a table that was 300 gigs in size, and I did multiple experiments on it. I took a 1% sample size, which seemed to be the most common size for folks if they had large objects. If you wanted to be able to gather stats quickly, people tended to go with 1% sample size. I then tried auto sample size, the new one in 11, and 100% sample. 